Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's been a long while since I've uploaded anything, and that's mainly because I was busy with having my first daughter and child born. Her name is Penelope, and she is the cutest thing ever. Naturally, I needed to focus all of my time on her and getting used to the role of dad. That feels weird saying that. Nonetheless, miniature making on YouTube is something I still really want to do. I actually had another video I wanted to post today. It was going to be my process of creating this. This was another of the Zombicide board game tiles that I made using MDF, foam board, and sand for the asphalt. I even recorded myself making the majority of it. Here's a little montage of it. And done. I actually like the way it turned out. One problem though, they don't sit very flush together, creating this bulge right in the middle of the street. And there are 18 of these tiles to make. Before I got too deep into making a bunch of these that wouldn't work, I went back to the drawing board. The Zombicide board had these crosswalk road markings. So I just made six markings one way and six the other. I cut it, painted it, measured it, taped it off, cut the tape, painted it again, and peeled it. Here's where the project went wrong. Well, actually nothing went wrong. I just straight up hate how the way it looked. I didn't even take a picture of it. Instead, I just painted over it again with white and forgot that MDF warps with a lot of paint. So I went back to Home Depot and didn't even realize this chalkboard slash whiteboard. With the black chalkboard side, I could cut out an entire step of painting it black. With my new board cut out, I went back to the drawing board again to make something that would still fit in the city theme and be modular. Instead of having dashed white lines all the way across, I want it to resemble an actual city. So I made a smaller square to represent a sidewalk and put the cross walk marks at every corner. Leaving some space from the crosswalks means I can add some yellow lines to resemble some roads. Once I made one square, I can just do a copy and paste to make another eight. I could leave the board looking like this, but I wanted to add a border around the entire board to make the edges a complete road. Planning ahead on the measurements saved me time. I drew and drew and drew and drew and drew all the measurements following my guide and then taped and taped and taped and taped and taped even more. Even called upon an unfortunate soul to help me tape. And we taped and taped all the areas that needed painting. And done. Next, I sponged on two coats of some acrylic white paint and let it dry overnight. Ready for some satisfying peeling? Here goes. Well, crap. So that didn't work out how I wanted. After screaming into a pillow for five minutes, <laughs> I felt better and was ready to try my third attempt at this project that was supposed to be easy but was becoming the bane of this channel. Luckily this board was salvageable, so I peeled everything off.
my ingenious dad then came over and suggested I use tape. I was a little skeptical to use it because I felt that it would just come off. I tried it and the adhesive was really strong. I started by covering the crosswalk areas with long strips and then measuring them to length. I didn't cover all of the board and I'll show why soon. I then cut the long strips every 5 inches and moved the cut piece over to the next row that needed tape. I then cut all the 5 inch strips every 1 fourth inch apart and then peeled every other strip and moved it over to the next row. This is why I didn't cover all the rows that would be crosswalks. I was able to use pieces of tape that would otherwise be discarded. Once done, I got some $4 yellow duct tape and laid out a big strip. This will be the yellow road lines. I cut them every 4.5 inches and then cut them very thin, eyeballing it. I look back on my plans and I know that the yellow lines will be there horizontally and then here vertically, leaving the middle as spaces to put the buildings. After laying them down and cleaning them up a bit with a hobby knife, I was nearly done. I just wanted to seal the tape down and after some experimenting, I found that PVA glue was the best choice. And now, after three tries, I'm finally done. This project took much longer than I wanted. But I wanted to make this a sturdy piece because this is what I envision my Zombicide board game as once I start building some buildings for it. If you've stuck around till the end, thank you for watching and subscribe if you want to see more buildings.